All right, now we're going to discuss operators. We've already used some operators, like the basic arithmetic operators, as well as some comparison operators in the last video. We'll do a quick review on those and talk about the other operators that we have available. Operators are symbols that tell C sharp to perform an action or an operation in an expression. Consider the expression 2 plus 3. The plus sign is the operator and it tells C sharp to add the two values together. The first operator that we looked at is the equal sign, which is an assignment operator. If you have a variable, let's say a, and you put an equal sign and a value afterwards, like 24, then the assignment operator assigns the value of 24 to the variable a. We've already looked at the arithmetic operators, plus sign for addition, the minus sign for subtraction, a forward slash for division, an asterisk for multiplication, and the percent sign for modulus. Each of these perform the basic arithmetic operations on the values that come before and after the symbol. There's also a shorthand way of doing those operations, combining them with the assignment operator. For example, if the variable a equals 24, on the next line, enter a plus equals 10. This is the same as writing a equals a plus 10, or a equals 24 plus 10. It takes the current value of a, and it adds that to the value after the plus equals operator. The variable must have a value assigned to it for this to work. So if you declare the a variable as an integer, but you didn't initialize the variable by assigning a value to it, and you try to use the plus equals operator, you'll get an error. Same with minus equals, times equals, divide equals, and modulus equals. Next, we have increment and decrement operators. In this case, we have a variable which equals 24. If we wanted to add just one to that, we could type a equals a plus one, a plus equals one, or we could use the increment operator. All you have to do is enter a plus plus. A double plus sign tells C sharp to add just one to the value. Each time this line is run, it will add one to the value of a. So if we run this code, a would equal 25. We can do the same thing with subtraction by using two minus symbols, a minus minus. This will subtract one from the value of a. These are useful when you're looping through a series of operations. Let's say you are looping through a list of users and displaying their names, maybe for a high score table in a game. You would have 10 players, and as you loop through them, you could increment the total players by 1 until total players equals 10. We also have comparison operators, which can be used to check for equality or inequality. For example, if we have another variable called b, which also equals 24, we can use these operators to check if a is equal to b, or if a is not equal to b. Let's take a look at how to do that. I'll make an if statement, and inside the brackets we can compare the two values. To do this, we use double equal signs. Remember, a single equal sign is an assignment operator. A single equal sign assigns a value to the variable on the left side of the expression. A double equal sign checks to see if the value on the left is equal to the value on the right. In this case, both a and b are equal to 24, and any code inside of this statement will be run. But what if you only wanted the code inside this if statement to run if these values were not equal to each other? To do that, we use an exclamation point followed by the equals sign. Exclamation equals returns true if the two values checked are not equal to each other. So now the code in this if statement would not be run because a and b are equal. If I were to change b to equal 20, now this will evaluate as true. We can also check to see if a value is less than or greater than another value by using the angle brackets. If we use the less than sign, it checks if the first value is less than the second value. If we use the greater than sign, we can check if the first value is greater than the second value. 
To take that a bit further, we can check if a value is less than or equal to another value. Just put an equal sign after the less than symbol. Now, if A is less than B, this code will run. Or, if A is equal to B, this code will run. You can do the same with a greater than. Just follow the greater than symbol with an equal sign. Now, let's change A and B from integers to booleans. And I'll change their values to true and false. In the last video, we talked about the if statement and how it expects a value of true or false to decide whether or not to run the code inside these brackets. Each of these expressions we've been writing evaluate to true or false. But we can also just pass in a boolean, like A, which is true, and that will cause the code in the brackets to run. We can check whether multiple expressions are true as well, with the AND operator. If I type AND after the A variable, and follow it with the B variable, the code in the brackets will only run if A evaluates to true, and B also evaluates to true. Right now, B is false, so the code in the brackets would be skipped over. I used booleans to make this example simpler, but you can put expressions in place of the variables, such as 2 plus 2 equals equals 4, and 4 plus 4 equals equals 8. Both of those are true, and would cause the code in the brackets to be run. Let's change 4 plus 4 equals 8 to 4 plus 4 equals 4. Since both values need to be true, this expression would evaluate to false. There is another operator, known as the OR operator, which will evaluate as true if the first expression OR the second expression evaluate as true. To use the OR operator, replace the AND with a vertical bar. In this case, 4 plus 4 does not equal 4, but 2 plus 2 does, so this will still evaluate as true. Sorry if this video is a little heavy on learning all these different operators and not really doing anything interesting with them yet, but we have to get this stuff out of the way because it's hard to really teach you guys anything advanced without having a good understanding of these fundamentals. If you've made it this far, hopefully you'll understand each of these operators and what they can be used for. Thanks for watching.